Welcome to the second part of the course. Now we're gonna shift our attention from policy analysis to program evaluation. This video pairs with program evaluation worksheet one. Just like with policy analysis, program evaluation is an activity you can expect to undertake at some point in your career as a public administrator. Here we're gonna do a very basic version of program evaluation, incorporating the most common components you'll find in many program evaluation methodologies. In your textbook, you'll find a number of chapters describing specific methodologies that professionals use often in the public and nonprofit sectors. Here, we're only going to focus on the first steps of program evaluation, though when you do this in the real world, you'll most likely be selected by an organization who wants you to do the evaluation, and the purposes of the evaluation will be negotiated with stakeholders. To help you, I've assembled a list of about a half dozen different types of federally funded programs to select from as they're the most likely to have robust enough reporting to do this project successfully. As you choose the one you want to evaluate, it's a good idea for you to spend some time navigating their website and looking for annual reports to get a good sense of what type of data is available and their methods for collecting, managing, analyzing, and reporting. For step one, you're just going to select an organization and do the background research. This information is found at the beginning of almost every evaluation report, so it should be fairly easy to track down and report out. The parent organization is usually the top level body that funds and oversees the program. In many cases, this is a department within the federal government. Sometimes there are funders outside the federal government and these should also be identified. You'll also wanna describe briefly who the clients are and who typically delivers services or the program's employees. Most often federal programs subcontract out to states and nonprofit organizations to deliver their programs. You'll also wanna provide a brief history of the program if possible. The program model is the logic by which the program should work. You'll want to identify the program's goals and objectives. These should be enumerated on almost all publications of the program and the target population the program serves. Hint, these should match the clients or consumers. Identify any specific criteria a person needs to meet in order to participate in the program. Finally, describe the intervention. That is, what specifically does the program do? What is the service that is delivered? Next, you'll want to report on what metrics are available. Annual reports are really good for helping you identify these metrics. Last, you'll need to conduct a readiness assessment. This is a tool you'll use in real life to determine whether the program you're assessing can successfully be evaluated or whether more information is needed. This should be part of your negotiation. For our purposes, you're just gonna make sure your selected program scores well on the following elements. You'll need to rate each on a scale of one to four, but do not need to report what these are for this assignment though it is good to keep track of this for later use. The program goals should be clearly identified and stated. The program's outcomes should be something that can be measured. Just like your evaluative criteria need to be operationalized to relate to specific data, the program's outcomes should be things that can produce data. The program should use some kind of standardized tool or an instrument for collecting data. Maybe they survey staff, maybe they require consumers to report certain information. Whatever they do, data needs to be collected in a uniform manner using some kind of tool. While you're thinking about the tool, what does the program say about the process for data collection? How is it done? When is it done? Who does it? Is this information clear? How is the data managed? Is it kept in binders in a warehouse somewhere? Does the organization use digital storage? Is it centralized or decentralized? How well does the program communicate with the world? That is, can you reasonably find out what the program is, how it works, and what's going on by reading their website, or is it a mystery? And finally, how much do the, does the program use data to inform decision making? Just like in policy analysis, most of the effort of program evaluation is made upfront in setting up the evaluation and analysis. So that when you collect data, you're uniformly doing so and with clearly delineated definitions of success and failure. In program evaluation, rather than projecting the future, you're dealing in what has already happened, so data collection is much more concrete. Question two is something you're going to devise. Most of the time, this is going to be worked out between you and the stakeholder requesting the evaluation. Here, you can make up a reasonable scenario for this question. It helps to read chapter four of the text to get a sense of what this is and like and why we do evaluation. For question two, You'll also determine whether you're performing a programmatic evaluation or a managerial evaluation. These have different objectives and look at different things. Both are valid and commonly used. A programmatic assessment deals with whether the goals and objectives of the organization are being met. 
a managerial assessment is more concerned with the functioning of the organization and what's going on administratively. There are a number of other attributes that you would consider and decide on in real life. I won't ask you to choose among these for this worksheet, but it is important for you to know these going forward. Formative assessments report on how well a program is doing in an ongoing basis so that your evaluation can be used to enhance or correct course. Summative assessments are performed after the program has completed its work as a conclusion on whether it was successful. Ongoing assessments are, as they sound, ongoing and produce reports on a repeated, regular basis. One-shot evaluations, then, are, as they sound, conducted one time and then they're complete. Will the evaluator be an objective observer outside the organization peering in to collect information with no skin in the game, or are they a program participant or employee of the program with intimate knowledge of its inner workings? Does the evaluation serve the purpose of advancing some goal? What is that goal? Is it an objective evaluation simply reporting on the state of the program? Is the evaluation quantitative, dealing in numbers, which is most common, or is it qualitative, dealing in verbal or written descriptions of phenomena? Ex ante evaluations are carried out before or early in a program, while the more common ex post evaluations are carried out toward the end of a program or after it's complete. Finally, is the evaluation being done because something is wrong that needs to be corrected, or is it simply an evaluation of normal functioning? While these are attributes often independent from one another, there are some places where they overlap logically. For example, a summit eva evaluation might not make sense to do ex ante or early in the program since the work hasn't been completed yet. As you justify your answers, you'd want to make sure that the whole set of responses fits together logically. If you have any questions while working on this worksheet, as always, please reach out to me directly and I'll be happy to assist you.